Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. Hey there, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. So glad that you are here. This podcast platform is dedicated to you, the industrial professionals, the companies that get it done. You're bold, you're brave, you dare greatly. We need you more than ever to change the world. Thank you very much for joining, and you are joining the number one industry-related podcast in the universe. That's my story. That is what I'm sticking to. We've got an interview We're going to be talking about influencing people, not manipulating, influencing people with a gentleman by the name of Brian Ahern. His company is called Influence People, LLC. Let's get going. Cool interview. All right. Again and again and again and again and again. I sit there and I hammer on these components. You got to collaborate. You got to reach out to your customers, prospects, friends. Whatever you got to collaborate because you need you don't have all the answers and you need to begin bringing in that an, those answers. You need to innovate. <clears throat> that is important. You need to innovate, not just from a technology point of view, but from let's say a human capital point of view, your business processes point of view. You've got to innovate. You got to be more efficient. You got to be nimble. You've got to be agile. You got to do all of that, right? That's important. And then you got to. <clears throat> I'm throwing in a new one. Learn. Now, here's the reality of learning, right? Right before you in the computer, you've got access to an infinite, it's almost infinite amount of uh, content that you can learn from. Now is the time. I believe pre-virus, we were a bit lazy. Post-virus, you better have your A-game on. And that A-game comes with learning and growing and sacrificing your time to learn as much as you possibly can. So we have collaborate, got to innovate, you got to learn. Right? You've got to take action. After you do all of that, that's all great and dandy and wonderful. You gotta take action. You gotta apply it, right? You gotta do it. And you gotta do it with a sense of urgency, a sense of speed. And I mean just you you've gotta be nimble and you gotta be agile and you just gotta take action. And when you do that, you're gonna you're gonna fail sometimes. You're gonna succeed, you're gonna fail, you're gonna have some sort of neutral result. The reality is you've got to start feeling comfortable with failing and learn from it and pivot and and move forward and get back to your collaboration, your innovation, your learning, and your your, uh, taking action. That's exactly what we've got to do. Do not argue with me on that. Please do not. I'm sure there are other categories, but those are my categories, and that's what I'm going to continue to preach on. Now, before we really get into the interview, I've got a couple of things. This is pen and paper time. Pen and paper time. Let's get them out. Okay. Once again, in in line with learning, right, there are companies out there that are doing webinars and a bunch of webinars. And they are, you say to yourself, Scott, I don't have the money to do that, blah, blah, blah. They're free. You have no excuse not to attend and participate because the people who are putting these webinars on are giving you incredible information and you get to learn from the very very best. Ha. I mean, come on, tell me why that that is all wrong, Ugh. and it's not. So here's one that you're going to have to put on your calendar. You're going to have to put it on your calendar. Do not hesitate on this one. It is brought to you by those incredible folks at IIOT World. Now, their website is IIOT-World.com. Now, the uh, webinar that they are promoting for, May, put it down, May 21st, 2020 is be ready to scale digital for manufacturing 4.0 through challenging times. Is this a challenging time? Yes, it is. Or is digital, the industry 4.0, all the digitization that's taking place out there, is that going to go away? No, it's not going to go away. And in fact, people are going to leverage more and more onto it. Okay. Now, what makes this this particular webinar spectacular? It's brought to you by Hitachi. Vantera. You're saying to yourself, Scott, you're kidding me. Does it get any better than that? No, it doesn't get any better than that. That's Hitachi Vantera, and that's V-A-N-T-A-R-A, and they're leaders in 
digitization. They're, we're going to have to lean on companies just like this. But the best part about Hitachi Vantera is the fact that they want you to succeed. Yeah. So here we got it. Got IIoT World. They've got this particular conference going on. And then they, all right. And then it's sponsored by uh, Hitachi Vantara. And so you got the marriage of two great leadership organizations and just providing incredible information. Again, mark that down on your calendar. That's May 21st, 2020. Okay, no excuses there. Also, if you go out to industrialtalk.com, I've got a couple of things out there that you need to do too in line with laying out that innovative uh, um, process and business model. we got a business valuation uh, page out there, and it just takes you question, question. And from the customer's perspective as well as your value proposition, your business, how do you align it, where are the gaps, what do you focus on, right there, everything, right there. It'll all be out at industrialtalk.com as, and as well as this particular conference on May 21st. You knew that. It's coming your way. All right, let's get on with the interview. This gentleman, as I pull up his stat card, he's the chief influencer officer, influence officer, Brian Aher, that's A-H-E-A-R-N. His website is, of course, influencepeople.biz. We don't manipulate around here. We're going to be talking about how do we communicate, how we communicate our thoughts, how we communicate our ideas, how do we close more sales and deals and all of the stuff that you need to be uh, focused on. Definitely big time. So we're going to start talking about building better relationships faster. We're going to start talking about helping others overcome uncertainty, which there is. And we're also going to be talking moving people to action. How can you argue against that? All right. Thank you very much again for joining the Industrial Talk Podcast. Here is Brian. Enjoy of the interview. Hey, Brian, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. So glad that you are here. Thank you very much for making time out of your busy schedule to talk to the wonderful listeners at the Industrial Talk Podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day here in Columbus, Ohio. I get to talk to you about a subject that I'm passionate about, and I get to share with a new audience. So what could be better? Yeah, well, it's, what's the temp? I mean, I was just walking the dock today, and I mean, it's it, in Louisiana, if you know anything about Louisiana, the, the weather rarely cooperates, and it's cooperating right now. Maybe it's because of the virus. It's, uh, it's beautiful and sunny and green, but it's cold right now. It's only uh, going to get up into the mid or upper 40s, so there was actually frost on the grass this morning, but still, it's, you know, when you can look outside and see the sun, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it is. Okay, so for the listeners out there, give us a little background, a little 411. I've been out on your LinkedIn stat card, got some mad street cred. Why don't you just sort of help the listeners level set on you as an influencer? All right. Well, I spent uh, more than three decades in the insurance industry, and uh, that's great training because you learn so much about people and different businesses. Um, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. I about 15 years ago, came across the work of a man named Dr. Robert Cialdini, who is a social psychologist uh, who worked at Arizona State University, became fascinated by the subject, saw it had clear application to help our business do much better. And then I started doing a lot of things outside of the four walls of the company that I worked for. I was very fortunate that the individual that I worked for actually promoted that. He knew that as I prepared and uh, spoke outside the company, trained, wrote, did all those things. I was a better speaker, writer, trainer in the company. And so I really got to perfect my skills in a corporate environment, but also with small business owners, independent insurance agents. And now this is what I do full time, teaching, speaking, coaching, and consulting around the psychology of persuasion. I like it. And uh, how did you say the, did you say Cialdini? Cialdini, yes. Robert well, Cialdini. It, it's, uh, it's interesting because I'm looking at your LinkedIn uh, uh, stat card, and I see C I A L D. I guarantee I wouldn't have said Cialdini. Yeah, most people butcher it until they hear it one time. Yeah, and, and then I go, "Hey, it's misspelled. It needs to have a C H in it as opposed to a C I." <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that's interesting. I'm going to look in, into that. That's a. Is that still sort of happening? The the Cialdini method of training and all that good stuff, or what's what's the latest on that? Yes. Uh, so I'm one of 20 people in the world certified by Dr. Robert Cialdini to teach his methodology when it comes to influence and persuasion. 
And then there's only a handful of us that are uh, certified to teach Presuasion, which was another book that he wrote. And, and how do you set the stage before you even try to influence somebody? What are the things you can do that might make it easier once yeah. you go in and make your ask? I see. I, I like that. So with that said, you're sort of, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, let's define what do you mean by the psychology of persuasion? And then let's go into a problem and then let's try to solve it. And then of course there's always roadblocks. Well, you know, we're going to have to sort of address that elephant, but tell us a little bit about psychology of persuasion, especially in light of what we're doing today. Okay. Well, I think if you ask 10 different people, you'd probably get 10 different answers when you'd say, what does persuasion mean to you? And I do think it's really important that you always level set, that you know what each other are talking about. Oh, now, typically when I would ask somebody, well, what is your definition of persuasion? I would hear one of two things, to change somebody's uh, thinking on a subject or to convince them of something. And those are good first starts, but they're not enough. So Scott, you know, if you had said to your kids when they were younger, clean your room, do you want them to A, look at you and say, dad, that's a good idea. You've convinced me it's a good idea. Or do you want them to B, get in there and clean their room? I think we all want B, right? <laughs> Just kid, don't, don't use your psychology of persuasion on me, children. Get in that room and do it. That's right. Take care and, of it. <laughs> and, and I think your listeners would agree that what we really want to have happen is to change somebody's behavior. It's not enough to just think something's a good idea or to convince somebody if they don't actually act on it. So my definition of persuasion, I think, comes uh, from the best source possible, Aristotle. And Aristotle told the world that persuasion was the art of getting somebody to do something that they wouldn't ordinarily do if you didn't ask. And if you really pause and think about that... You you know, say that again, please. The art of getting somebody to do something that they wouldn't ordinarily do if you didn't ask. No, oh, that's interesting. So, yeah. so your kids aren't going to probably clean the room until you communicate with them some way, or they probably don't want to study. Or if you're a manager, maybe there are certain things that your employees won't do until you communicate with them. So it all comes down to then how you communicate. And the science behind this, and there's more than seven decades, says that there are better ways to go about interacting with people to persuade them. How do you deal with the, the sort of that negative connotation associated with, hey, you're, you're manipulating me? Okay, great question. And this is probably one of the most often asked questions. What's the difference between influence or persuasion and manipulation? Um, when we do workshops, and we spend a good bit of time talking about how to do this ethically, I think that in order to ethically influence somebody, three things need to be present. First, you need to be truthful. You have to tell the truth and you don't hide the truth. So it's not good enough, Scott, if somebody says, well, you didn't ask, right? If, if I have a piece of information that I know could impact your decision making, but I'm holding it back and hoping you don't ask, if you find out about it after the fact, you're not going to look at me as an ethical yeah. guy. Yeah. But what you learn with influence is you can even talk about your shortcomings or weaknesses in your case. And depending on how you do that, you can actually gain credibility and continue to move forward. So we, truthfulness, it's number one. Uh, the second thing that we talk about is we have to use psychology that's natural to the situation. And probably the best example that people can relate to is uh, the person who knocks on their door to sell them something like roofing, siding, gutters, whatever. And they give you that hard sell that says, Scott, if you sign today, I can give you a 15% discount. But if right. I have to come back tomorrow, I can't offer you that deal. And the reality is they know that you're going to feel this like, oh boy, if I don't sign, I'm going to lose this. Yeah. But there's nothing really scarce there. They could come back tomorrow and offer you the exact same price. It's not like somebody bought the last supplies and therefore they can't uh, make a deal with you. So they're really manipulating you by taking the psychology and applying it in a way that's not true to the situation. And then the third thing that we talk about is whatever it is that we're offering has to be good for the other person, not just good for you. Um, I, I like to say, good for you, good for me, then we're good to go. If what I'm offering you is also in your best interest, even though I may get you know, a commission or some kind of compensation, yes, I, th that's okay. But I have to be doing something that's good for you. Stephen Covey would have called it a win-win. So if I yeah. can do those three things, I'm telling the truth, I'm using psychology that's natural to the situation, and I'm offering something that's good for you as well as good for me. I can feel comfortable that I'm operating in an ethical manner. 
Okay, very good. I like that a lot. Now, we've got to address the elephant in the room, right? We're, we're as a, it's, it's global. So, so don't think that you're, you're the only one in the boat. This whole virus thing has really sort of challenged a lot of businesses, a lot of individuals, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. Uh, it is an absolute emotional roller coaster out there right now. And it looks like we're going to have more time to deal with it. But with the with with persuasion, with what you're talking about, the psychology of persuasion. Mm-hmm. Right now, what can we do? Where where are we at? I mean, we, we want to. I'm I'm a big advocate, um, Brian, on on what can we do today because it's going to pass. Mm-hmm. But that whatever that new normal is, I I don't know. I'm not even going to go down it. But it's going to be different, and business as usual is going to have to change. So. What, do you, what, what are we talking about here? What, what can we do today? Well, there's a lot of things that people can do right now because they either have more time on their hands. I mean, many people are sitting at home and not working or people who are at home are not used to working at home and they need these different types of breaks. And so, <laughs> yeah. You, you should, I'm sure you've had a number of conversations. No, what do I do? My pool is the cleanest it's ever been. My hedges have been trimmed. My dog has been yep. walked miles and miles and miles. You know? Yep. And, and those things, those can be good things if they're, you know, breaks in the day just to break yeah. up the routine because it can be really hard to sit in the same spot. You haven't left the house and you feel like you're working all the time. But another thing that you can do is to sharpen your skills. And there's so many things to do. I mean, there are books. I've got a book. Cialdini's got several books. You, you could be reading on this topic. You could be going to LinkedIn Learning. I've got courses there. There are other courses available. Um, uh, podcasts like, like this, where I've been guests on podcasts, other people. There are people who are behavioral yeah. economists who have podcasts. There are so many avenues, depending on your learning mode, that you can engage in to start sharpening this skill. And the reason that this is so important right now is, as you and I were talking about before you started recording, the economy, the way it was, almost anybody could succeed or marginally succeed. But now the ones who are gonna succeed are the ones who are really the best. You know, the average restaurant is probably not coming back, but the really good ones will come back. The average salesperson isn't gonna do so well, but the people who are really good are gonna continue to excel. And that's because they are better at what they do. And to get better, you've got to sharpen your skills through learning and through practice. And there's probably no better time than right now for people to engage in some of that learning so that as things move back into a normal, they really feel like they're ahead of their peers. See, and and really, there's no excuse, quite frankly. If you truly have that desire, that burning desire within your heart, you, you have no excuse because the information is readily available, and it's not that difficult to get. When we were kids, we'd have to go to the doggone library, and that would have just absolutely been just nuts, right? Yeah. Everybody reading their Britannica encyclopedia, <laughs> you know, yeah. but now it's it's the, because of technology, because of what's available, because of people like you and others who freely share insights and solutions, just do it. And, it, and, and you're only talking, what? I mean, it, set, set a target for 15 minutes. Learn yeah. something new. Who knows, man? But you're absolutely right. Now is the time because tomorrow you'll be in a better position. Yeah. Every activity that you shared, cleaning the pool, trimming the hedges, walking the dog, all of those things, you could have your headphones on and be listening to a podcast where you're learning new things and beginning to sharpen your skills. And then when you come back and whatever work you are doing, starting to apply that and see how does it work and and refine and refine, refine. And when things get back to that more normal, again, you will be farther ahead of the yes. people who just decided to sit and watch Netflix all day. Yes. By the way, that stock was doing well. I ended up selling <laughs> I'm it. I'm sure it is. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a consequence. Now, we have some actionable items that I want to be able to go through right now. And I want okay. to just sort of pepper you a little bit. And this is from your form that you filled out. But I want to hear a little bit more about that. What do you mean by build better relationships faster? Okay. When you understand why people may like you and what causes that, then you can be more strategic about making that happen. Quite often when I used to talk to salespeople, especially if I was interviewing, I would say, you know, why should we hire you? And one of the number one things they would say is I have great relationships with my customers. But the moment that I would ask them, well, 
how do you build those relationships? You could see the hesitancy. They knew when it was there, but they didn't really know exactly how it came about. And if we can teach people what those factors are so that they can be very thoughtful as they enter into these potential new relationships, they can build them quicker. And it's, it's a fact that people like to buy from people they like. So we teach them some of those simple things. I call it the beer factor. And it's sort of funny because if, if I want to have a beer with you, then it's like, yeah, I like you. I mm-hmm. like you. For whatever reason, whatever, whatever you know, touched my, my, uh, my mind, I, yep. I said, hey, they got a good beer factor. But well, nonetheless. Think about this, Scott. Think yeah. about this, though. You, you probably enjoy drinking a beer, right? So you wouldn't want to taint that positive experience with somebody that you don't like. You know, and if you can – if you can associate yourself with things that someone already holds in positive esteem, then they're going to associate you with that positivity. That's the kind of thought process that yeah. people need to have so that they can build those relationships much faster and not just to sell something, but so that they can honestly say, I like what I do because I really enjoy the people that I interact yes, with. Yes, yes. And that's really important. Now, uh, the, part of that, I'm, I'm a big fan of a. It's not about me. It's about the other, being other focused and solving problems. And really just like, I hear you. I hear, here, here is a solution that, you know, I give it to you for free. Here, have a solution. Mm-hmm. And just by virtue of that, I, I find that, you know, if somebody comes to me and says, Scott, I see you have a problem here, do this. You know, I've, <laughs> outside of buying them a beer real fast. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that engages the psychology that we call reciprocity. You yeah. appreciate that they yeah. proactively did that thing that yeah. was beneficial to you. And that is also part of how we build relationships because you feel good about that person who proactively helped you. And you just instinctively said, you know, wanting to buy them a beer, you wanted to do something to return right. that favor. Right, but right. that puts you in relationship because now there's going to be a second interaction. So having people also understand the principle of reciprocity and looking to genuinely help other people, it comes back in multitudes. That's why Zig Ziglar used to say, if you want to succeed in life, just help other people succeed first. It is so easy, but powerful. It is yep. so just... It's it's so clear now. Um, today, and and this is a big beef, it, and and it's not a beef. Trust me. But but what happens to people just in general, and what I've gathered, th- they'll just start to close in. Some people will close in. Some people will just be islands and isolated. Um, I find an an opportunity to be able to reach out to people that I know and just just hey, let's get on a Zoom. Let's just chit chat. Let's talk. How are you doing? Is there anything I can do? Let me know. Hey, thank you for whatever, you know, and just move on. And it's everybody, once again, is in this boat together yep. and uh, everybody's looking for help. Everybody's mm-hmm. looking for solutions. Everybody's looking for insights. And so anyway, you know, especially now, reach out to those individuals that you, you, you know that are somewhat lonely. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a sales pitch of anything. It just can be touching. I, yeah, I've yes. sent so many emails that say touching base, just wanted to find out how you're doing. Yeah. Um, hope you and your family are healthy. Right. Things are good on my end. They're right. changed. And, and I, I get so much response to that. And I get much longer responses yeah. than the actual email that I sent or the text that I sent. People, right. people will remember that. But again, I'm, I'm not doing it just to foster this business relationship. I, I really care about the people that I've been interacting with. And it comes from the heart. Business, yeah, even if we don't end up doing business, yeah. that's okay. That's okay. That's right. All right, let's go on to number two real quick. Help others overcome uncertainty. Boy, is is that a big word, uncertainty, especially today. Yep. Well, a couple of things that can help people overcome uncertainty are these principles that we call authority and consensus or, or social proof. When you're not sure what to do and somebody who's in a position of expertise tells you what you should probably do, you feel more confident taking that stance. Now, if you don't know that person's an expert, you might look at them and think, well, who are you to tell me what to do? Yeah. So it's incumbent upon somebody who is, a, who is good at influence to make sure that their credentials are out in front of them so people will pay attention. It would do no good for us to have this conversation and people are wondering, well, who's that guy, Brian? And then they find out after the fact because they may have stopped listening. But if they know up front that I'm one of 20 people in the world certified by the most cited living social psychologist, now they're like, oh, this could be interesting. I want to pay attention. So having expertise, but making sure people know that. 
And then the second thing is, what are people, what are other people doing? And more importantly, what are people who are like you doing? Because most of us feel like, well, if people who are just like me are doing this, then I should at least give it some thought. I should yeah. look into this because if it's succeeding for them, it'll probably succeed for me. And those are two psychological principles that can really help to dispel that uncertainty that people may have at different times. But once again, you, you bring up a good point where it's, it's, you, you've got to reach out. You can't do this in a vacuum. You've got to reach out. You've got to be, you've got to be a student of learning and, and ob observing what other people are doing. Now is the time. you got the time. And uh, the final one is, uh, is a big deal for me because uh, I'm finding that some uh, are, won't take action. They're just sort of waiting. Now, that's a big deal. I'm, I'm all about action. It's all, it's all great to talk about this stuff, but if you don't put it into action, it's just still the same. It's, it mm -hmm. means nothing to a certain extent. So as an ethical influencer, the way that you motivate people to action are by tapping into two other principles, the principle of consistency and the principle of scarcity. And consistency alerts us to this fact, Scott, that we all feel better about ourselves when our words and deeds line up. And one thing that you can do to try to motivate people to action during this time is to remind them of something as simple as, you know, maybe, uh, Joe, you've always said you don't have enough time to sit down and read or learn. Right. And now you have the time. What are you going to do with it? And you wait for Joe to say, well, I hadn't really thought about that. Maybe I should. And the moment that he verbalizes that he probably should, and it's lined up with his prior thoughts and actions, then it's much easier for him to take action. And a second way to motivate that is by using scarcity, which tells us people, people will respond more when they believe an opportunity is rare or going away. And so saying to that same person, you know, Joe, um, nobody knows how long this is going to last, but at some point we're going to come out of this quarantine period and you're not going to have this time back. You're going to probably be headlong back into work and all the things that you've got to do. Why not use this time before it's gone? And again, now, now you're starting to think like, oh, I may lose this opportunity. I probably should take these next few weeks and dive in and do some things that I know will benefit myself. Those are two really powerful ways to drive people to take action when they wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. And, and, and another way of scarcity, I, I look in, if you're looking out on the video, he's got a nice scotch bar right behind him. And I would be very motivated if he was running out of a certain type of scotch. So <laughs> scarcity is... Uh, just kidding. But, but those are absolutely spot on listeners right now. There's a couple of things that uh, you can do today. First off, right off the bat, let's, uh, let's sharpen our skills. You know that this is going to end. You know that you got time right now. You want to be in a different position when all of this ends. So let's sharpen the skills. No excuses, right? It's all out there. Make it happen, Captain. And, and I'm not going to listen to you if you say, hey, I just didn't have time. No, you had time, most definitely. So do that. We want to be able to do a better job at, at building those relationships faster. We're always about compressing time, especially now. Let's compress that time. Let's build those relationships. And, and definitely listen to what uh, Brian has to say. The other one, let's help other people overcome uncertainty, right? That's important. Reach out. Talk to them. And if you come from the perspective of authority, right, do that. And then uh, let's, and don't, don't, don't argue with me on this one, let's act and act now. Take action because right now is the time so that when whatever, this period of time is over, you're in a better position, most definitely. Are you active out there, Brian, on LinkedIn? I am. I'm all over LinkedIn. So, uh, folks, who are listening, if you want to reach out to connect, uh, please feel free to do that. If you don't put a note in there that you are listening to the podcast, I guarantee you I will send you a note back just to ask, how did you find me? I like to understand where the traffic yeah. is coming from. So uh, either way, it also starts a conversation and social media is intended to be social. So uh, feel free to reach out. Good. I like that a lot. And are there, uh, it looks like if you just type in uh, Brian F., right? Yeah. Ahern. Yep. Did I say that right? Yes. Good. And then uh, you'll find him most definitely. He's a good looking guy with glasses. He's not wearing glasses now. I don't understand. He should wear glasses, by the way. You look far more influential. So I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. 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 You'll throw it in the trash like all the <laughs> It's like, eh, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and then uh, 
Also, out on industrialtalk.com, he's got a 15-minute trading video, and I'll put a link to that. And it's a 15-minute psychology of persuasion. Very good. Take that. You have time. And then, of course, his book is Influence People, The Power, Every Day, Opportunity to Persuade that are lasting and ethical. Got that? Got it. All right. You're out on uh, uh, Amazon, right? Yes, it is. It's out on, right. on Amazon. They can get it in uh, paperback, ebook, or audible. Well, there you go. So, again, listeners, no excuses. That's yeah, right. You can't say, oh, I normally listen to it. And, nope. Can't even. Nope. Yep. While you're trimming the bushes, Absolutely. doing the pool, walking the dog, cutting the yep. grass is yep. an opportunity. Absolutely. No excuses. I love when you remove the, the friction of excuses. Yes. <laughs> All right. Everybody out there, that is Brian Ahern. He is uh, founder and CEO, I would imagine, and just a big thinker of everything, all things. Influencepeople.biz is his uh, domain name. Is that yep. get that right? Yes. Yep. So look into it. I would. Brian, thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk podcast and sharing your wisdom with the listeners. Thank you. My pleasure, Scott. Thank okay, you. Okay, you listeners right now, you got to stay tuned because we're going to wrap it up on the other side. So again, thank you very much. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. All right. Thank you very much again for joining the Industrial Talk Podcast, a platform that's dedicated to you, the industrial professionals. You get it done. Thank you very much for being bold, brave, and daring greatly and changing the world. It's all about you. That was Brian Ahern. That is A-H-E-A-R-N. Influencing People is his uh, website, his moniker. Powerful message, important message, definitely during these days. Okay, again, let's wrap it up. We're talking about uh, IIOT World, right? And we're talking about a conference that is free, no excuses. We're talking about constantly learning, talking about collaboration. We're talking about innovation. And here is a conference that does all of that in one just beautiful package, right? May 21st is the date, 2020, just right around the corner. 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is the time. Just click on the register. It's not going to cost you anything. You get to be a part of a bunch of great digitization influencers. That's what we're talking about. All right, and it's brought to you again. Oh, boy, Hitachi Vantara. Fantastic company, fantastic people, incredible. Go out to HitachiVantara.com, find out more. They're leading. Thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk podcast. Be bold, be brave, dare greatly, change the world. It's all about you, all about your success. Thank you very much. Take care and be safe.